Today we're going to be taking a look at the folding knives for survival in Alaska. Now before we show the knives, I want to kind of talk about the philosophy so that you understand why I chose the knives I chose. Now I could have certainly chose different knives, you know, things like the Buck 110 and something like the Benchmade 275 Adamus. I've owned those knives before and they are not bad knives. However, my philosophy when it comes to folding knives for survival, even in Alaska, is actually a little bit different than my fixed blade philosophy. Now my fixed blade philosophy was about having large stout knives that were good for a range of different tasks. Whereas my folding philosophy is more about that type of philosophy that, you know, the best survival knife you have on you, or the best survival knife you have, is a survival knife that you have on you. So with that out of the way, these are my two choices, my two primary choices. Now, of course, I could certainly carry more than this, and I have certainly carried other knives, but through my testing, these two have been the most capable and the most pocketable folding blades for Alaskan survival. Now, like I said, these are not big knives at all. The top one is the Benchmade 556 Mini Grip, and this one is in a kind of striking cyan blue handle, but it's still a 556 and does have a bug out clip, as you can tell. And then the next one below it is actually the Blade HQ exclusive uh, 535 Benchmade bug out. Now, as much as I dislike Benchmade knives, I will give them this. These two knives are very well put together and honestly for the size and capability of these blades that's why they make my cut that's why they are here i'm not always the largest fan of bench made knives and i really don't edc many of them but these two knives especially for the outdoors and for survival are pretty darn tough to beat especially when we start talking about some of the limited runs like this one that come in 20 cv or different limited runs of the benchmade griptilian that came in s30v very premium steels that will hold an edge without much maintenance or care for a very long time so let's get into why these two knives are my top picks for survival knives survival folders in alaska so like I said, the primary emphasis that I put on survival knives when they become folders as opposed to fixed blades is pocketability. I'm looking for knives that, for folders, that can be very easily th thrown in a pocket, thrown in a pouch of a backpack, just thrown in somewhere, and basically forgotten about. Things that don't weigh you down, that aren't heavy, that aren't large, that aren't obtrusive, but yet at the same time still have a very usable blade or blade profile and are still tough enough to be batoned. So they can see some hard use, or what I would consider, they can see as hard a use as the blade length would permit. Obviously with a blade length of, you know, just under, I think, three inches, you know, this mini grip is not going to be able to baton very large, very hard pieces of wood. However, if you do baton something that has the blade length or that will fit within the blade length of this mini grip, it will absolutely work without a problem. And the same can very much be said about the bug out. Because both of these knives do use the axis lock, the axis lock is one of the tougher locks for a folding blade. Now I say tougher because it's not that these blade or these yeah, these blade locks will not fail, it's just that they can take a lot of abuse before they fail. Now of course that isn't necessarily encouraging you to go out and baton with your axis lock knives. But on many instances, I've batoned with my 275 uh, Adamus from Benchmade. I've batoned and done survival training extensively with the little mini grip 556. And, you know, I can tell you that these axis locks are definitely strong. They are not weak locks at all, and they will not just spontaneously fail. Now, like I was saying, the reason why I like these blades or these two in particular, is that they are very small and very lightweight, but at the same time, they're not too small because this little mini grip is kind of like my perfect uh, blade for folding survival because you can see that I can still get a good four-handed grip on it. Like I said, the axis lock means that I can still baton the blade if I need to. The back of the spine 
will strike a ferro rod. So with all the core fundamentals uh, of a survival knife, things, you know, like feather sticking, dressing, field dressing, game animals, um, doing the basics of survival. Obviously, this is not going to be able to really help you, you know, build a shelter, but building fires, prepping food, you know, doing different things like that, this knife will absolutely be able to help you and to help you pretty darn well. So, like I said, it fits in the hand very well, and because of its small size when folded, you can see that this thing literally fits in my palm when it's folded. It has such a small profile and such a usable blade that it is really hard to go wrong with the 5.56 mini grip, especially if you throw a bug out clip on it. This is basically pocket her folding knife survival this is basically the top of the line for folding knife survival knives because it really just gets the job done and once again it's very unobtrusive and like I said it works so next to that if I'm looking for something to go a little bit lighter weight because this thing because the mini grip is a little bit smaller but it is actually a little bit heavier than the bug out so if I'm looking for something that's a little bit lighter weight and or something that has a little bit more meat to it so it has a little bit longer handle the bug out is my option or the 535 bug out is my next choice once again it has an extremely usable or useful blade shape and profile so you can easily field dress game animals um, carve notches for traps or just in general carve notches feather stick wood very easily with this blade and of course this one being made out of 20 CV is going to last quite a while without the need to sharpen but because this is a bug out and those who know the bug out it's extremely thin and extremely lightweight so it's once again one of those knives that you can throw in a pocket throw in a pouch of a backpack and just completely forget that it's even there. And that is what I really love about really both of these options, but especially the bug out, is that they are just so lightweight and so minimal that you're bound to have them on you. So going back to choosing larger knives for survival, larger folding blades, something like the Buck 110. The primary reason why I lean towards these smaller survival blades or smaller folding blades for survival is just because I had larger blades like the 275 Adamus and the Buck 110 and I was finding that realistically I wasn't carrying them. The Adamus weighed half a pound and the Buck 10 weighs even more. And so realistically, I didn't want to throw these things in a pocket. I didn't want to throw these things in a pouch on a backpack. Granted, it'd be more reasonable that way. But these knives weighed just as much as full-on fixed blades. And really, you weren't getting a whole lot of bang for your buck, so to speak. You were, you were still capped to an under 4-inch blade with the 275 Adamus. And like I said, a half pound, that was pretty crazy. So it ended up not seeing much time in my pocket. And realistically, with a survival knife, regardless to whether it's a folder or a fixed blade, the most important thing is that it's on you when the situation happens or occurs. And that's just what wasn't happening for me. I was not really wanting to carry those larger, more robust, heavier duty blades because they were unrealistic. So that's when I started to drift more towards these smaller blades, and I started with the Benchmade Mini Grip, the 5.56, and really fell in love with it. And still, to this day, I consider this to be the hallmark, like the actual benchmark for a good pocket knife folder for survival, because I have done like I said, quite a bit of work with field dressing animals, starting fires, carving uh, notches for traps, all with the little 556. Five, At the end of the day, survival knives come down to what are you going to actually have in your pocket. So you have to be very realistic with yourself and understand that, you know, it's better to have something that is lighter weight, smaller, and will still offer a great deal of ability 
and realistically, you know, guarantee that you'll have one of these in your pocket as opposed to going with something that might be a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, but you might not end up carrying it. So that is my opinion when it comes to pocket folding knives for survival in Alaska and really survival in general, because, you know, this is applicable here in Alaska, just as it is applicable in any other part of the state, any other or any part of the country. So definitely, you know, probably wasn't what many people were expecting for me to, uh, you know, go out and say about survival knives or folding survival knives. You know, there certainly are a lot of very robust, very large options. I can think of a lot of different cold steel variants, with, especially with the triad lock, that would make very good options for folding survival knives. But realistically, like I said, it all comes down to whatever is going to be in your pocket, whatever you're going to be carrying, is what's going to be most valuable to you. So definitely think about it in that regards. And you know, this can go. And this can go for you know Swiss Army knives. This can go for you know single bladed options like this, or even knives like the Great Eastern Cutlery Pocket Carver. You know, you just want to look at what can you use to affect your survival and what are you really going to carry at the end of the day? Because that's the most important question and really the most important answer that you have to find. So anyways guys, hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, God bless and I'm out.